The Florida Department of Transportation would like to welcome you to the Corridor Alternatives public meeting for the Santa Rosa Sound Alternate Crossing Study. The purpose of tonight's workshop is to update you on the study and to receive your comments or questions regarding the corridors being evaluated. We will look at the history of the project, the purpose and need for an alternate corridor crossing, the process used to identify and evaluate potential corridors, the results of the corridor evaluation to date, the corridors that are being recommended for further consideration, and how you can provide your input and stay involved. The Santa Rosa Sound Alternate Crossing Study is a high-level planning study that is in the first phase of a multi-phase process. The overall objective of the study is to determine the feasibility and potential location for an alternate road and bridge corridor between Fort Walton Beach and Okaloosa Island. By the end of this study, we want to have gathered enough information to help determine whether or not this project should proceed to a more detailed phase of analysis called a Project Development and Environment Study, or PD&E. The study was initiated in February 2015 and is expected to conclude early next year. Since the public kickoff meeting last April, the Florida Department of Transportation has completed numerous activities, including the evaluation of existing and future traffic patterns, coordination with various stakeholders, and identification of 10 potential corridor alternatives. The primary purpose for considering an alternate corridor is to help reduce congestion along State Road 30 US 98 through downtown Fort Walton Beach. The 2015 FDOT annual average daily traffic counts for US-98 in the study area range from 35,500 vehicles a day on US-98 west of Perry Avenue to 50,500 vehicles a day on the existing Brooks Bridge, indicating that State Road 30 US-98 in this area is failing. The study is currently in the planning phase and is following a process developed by FDOT known as an Alternative Corridor Evaluation, or ACE. The ACE process helps identify reasonable corridor alternatives and is used to evaluate and document potential alternatives that can be carried forward into future phases. And now, let us walk through the steps that have been completed to date. The study area for the project was defined by the Okaloosa Walton Transportation Planning Organization as part of their long-range transportation planning process. The study area serves as the starting point for identifying potential corridors. The corridor study area was then screened using a weighted system based on the importance of environmental and social features. This process allows the project team the ability to determine the paths of least resistance in which to place alternate corridor crossings of the Santa Rosa Sound. Factors such as land use, parks, historic sites, wetlands, and endangered species are considered. The darker shaded areas represent less desirable locations for a corridor. Due to federal requirements, FDOT also gave consideration to corridors evaluated in past studies. For this study, corridors that were analyzed as part of the Emerald Coast Bridge Authority's 2006 study are included in the analysis. They include the Wright Parkway Corridor, the Brooks Corridor, and the Hollywood Boulevard Corridor. After giving consideration to past studies and following the screening process, nine preliminary corridors were identified within the study area. For comparison purposes, all corridor alternatives begin at the State Road 30, US 98, and Mary Esther Boulevard intersection. A very important part of the corridor analysis is public input. A stakeholder advisory group was formed at the onset of the study and is comprised of representatives from the community, area businesses, and organizations. Based on input received from this advisory group, a 10th corridor was suggested and added to the list of potential corridor options. Using Alternative 6 as an example, all corridor alternatives assume a 500-foot corridor width for a new bridge crossing and a 200-foot corridor width for segments where existing roads would be utilized. This provides flexibility in future phases in which to place the proposed bridge and road typical sections. Each of the 10 corridor alternatives was then evaluated for consistency with the project's purpose and need, social, cultural and natural environmental impacts, and engineering considerations and cost. 
The purpose and need evaluation included measuring the ability of each corridor alternative to relieve congestion in downtown Fort Walton Beach, improve emergency evacuation times, enhance regional connectivity, and support local and regional plans. The social impacts evaluated include potential relocations, effects on community facilities such as schools and churches, and other factors including impacts to existing neighborhoods and low-income and minority communities. The cultural impacts evaluated include historic and archaeological sites, parks and recreation lands, conservation lands, and beach access. The natural impacts evaluated include water quality, wetlands, and potential impacts to wildlife and their habitat. The environmental factors evaluated are summarized in an environmental evaluation matrix that is on display tonight. Engineering considerations such as access management, traffic operations, and estimated project costs were also evaluated. The results of the engineering considerations evaluated are summarized in an engineering considerations matrix, which is on display tonight. Based on the results of the evaluation, Corridor 7 and 10 are recommended for further analysis. Corridor 10 represents the best ranking corridor alternative that utilizes the existing Brooks Bridge Crossing. Corridor 7 represents the best ranking corridor alternative that utilizes a new bridge crossing. The findings of the corridor evaluation are on display at tonight's meeting. There are a number of ways you can provide your input on the corridor alternatives and stay involved in the study. Please contact any of the FDOT staff here or send an email to info at santarosasoundcrossing.com. You can also follow the study on Facebook. All of the contact information is also presented in your handout. To provide comments at tonight's meeting, you can complete a comment form and drop it in the comment boxes provided. You can also submit a comment or view tonight's presentation materials by visiting www.nwflroads.com. After tonight's meeting, we will review the input received, finalize the recommendations on which corridor should move forward, and document the findings in a corridor report. At that time, FDOT will make a decision on whether to advance the project to the next phase. The next phase is currently not scheduled or funded. This concludes tonight's presentation. Thank you for attending.